All right, so in this video, I wanna talk about more Bitcoin basics, and this one's gonna be focused on how well it's work. This is gonna be very, very high level, just so you get an understanding of what an actual wallet is and how that's different than what we think of as a physical wallet. What we want is to get an understanding of how the analogy maps to the underlying technicals. Okay, so again, very high level, and let's see if I can do this in under five minutes here. The way that I think about everything is visually. So how do I apply that to thinking about wallets? Well, you can think about the relationship between keys and addresses with Russian dolls, right? You have this grandparent and then you have a parent and you have a child. The reason why I use this Russian dolls uh, example is because people can visually understand that if you have a large Russian doll, the smaller one that sits in that is just that it's smaller. Okay, so a similar thing is true for the private public key and the address relationship. All right, so this public key is sort of like a smaller version of the private key. It's close enough. It's close enough to being true. And the address is a smaller version of the public key. So basically the reason why we send addresses around is because they're smaller versions of public keys. So it makes it easier to do. And the idea is, is that one is sort of a smaller piece of data than the other, which means that you cannot regenerate a public key from the address. So if I send you the public key, you wouldn't be able to, to, to discover what my private key is. Private keys are generated using some really large random number. The computer generates that random number. The software generates that random number. And then it maps that to a word list. So your random number can be recoverable with human readable words. All right, so we can visualize that here. So on the left, we have the dice visualized. That generates your mnemonic or your word list. I have some of the words blanked out because really what you're trying to do is you're not trying to ever share that. Obviously this is like a bunk. If, but if I were to put 12 words up there, everyone would try and put it into a wallet and see if there are any funds in it. So we won't mess around with that. The point is, is that your private key should stay private and your mnemonic is a way to regenerate that private key. Okay, so you always wanna keep that private and preferably offline entirely so that in the case that you lose your, you know, you, you lose your phone, which had your, your wallet on it, you can regenerate that wallet using your mnemonic because what you're doing is you're, you're recreating that exact same random number that was used to produce your exact private key. And then all of your private keys have your public keys associated with it and all of your public keys have, you know, is where people have sent you funds. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. So now let's talk about what the difference is between the physical wallet in your pocket and the digital wallet that you store your Bitcoins in. All right, so both digital wallets and physical wallets are tools that we use to store and spend money, but the properties of these two are very different. With physical wallets, you're holding the cash directly. All right, at least when, you, when we're talking about physical cash, not at all when you're talking about like credit cards or debit cards, but when you're holding physical cash, you have the cash and the value directly in that wallet. With a crypto wallet or a digital crypto wallet, you never actually hold the money directly. You only ever hold access to it, like, you know, with your private key. So the idea is, is that because it's not holding your funds directly, it's simply access to it. Imagine you were crossing a national border from one country into another. I mean, if you've ever done this, basically every country will ask you, like, do you have more than $10,000? Are you traveling with more than $10,000 in cash with you? And the answer is usually no, at least for myself. Um, but if you have Bitcoin keys with you, that's a very weird question because you know, if Bitcoin, if Bitcoin can, if a private key can be regenerated with just 12, a 12 word mnemonic or a 24 word mnemonic, your Bitcoins aren't really moving with you just because you have access to that information, right? It would be something like memorizing your, your credit card number or your debit card number. Uh, just because you have that money in your bank account and you have the number memorized, it, it doesn't move when you move across a border, right? The only way money moves on the blockchain is when you send something in the context of a transaction. All right, so physical wallets physically store funds, whereas digital Bitcoin wallets can only give you access to funds that live permanently on the blockchain. All right, so hopefully I did that in under five minutes. And if you wanna learn more, you can check out the next video that I'll post tomorrow about Bitcoin. And we'll learn more about some basics and some mental models about how you can understand Bitcoin, hopefully as simply as possible. I'll see you in the next video.